Welcome to Minister's Message. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for keep coming back and watching and making these videos worthwhile. Uh, here on Minister's Message, we hope to give you a little bit of insight as to what's happening in Tain and Fern Free Church, but further beyond ourselves uh, to take a look and to learn about our own presbytery, uh, our own communities, uh, and also even to look around the whole world and meet different individuals from different parts of the globe. At the outset today, let me uh, highlight this is the Tin and Fern calendar for 2021. Uh, we've done a fundraising calendar for a number of years now and you can get your own hands on one of these as a gift or for yourself. There's lots of different views on the back of it, views that we've shown you here on Minister's Message over the last six or seven months, uh, the Shanwick Stone, uh, Pulpit Rock on Tain Hill, uh, down in the Seaboard Villages, over in Dornoch, uh, one very similar to the view right behind me that's looking over to the Sutherland Hills like we were last week as well. So if you'd like to get uh, one of these calendars as a gift or to give, then please get in touch with Rona Gregg. Her details are on the screen at the moment, her email address or her phone number so you can get in touch with Rona and she will ensure that um, you will get one of these calendars. Well let's look ahead to Sunday here on Tain and Fern Free Church. We continue our morning series This Is My Story. Last week we, we met Timothy. He was a timid fellow, rather shy, and he was called into the ministry from a young age. This week we're meeting Manasseh, and they couldn't be more different, really. You see, Manasseh wasn't timid or shy, he was bold. He wasn't a preacher, he was a king. He was not nice, he was evil, he was wicked. He did some horrible things, as we'll see on Sunday. And yet they weren't actually all that different. Because you see, both Timothy and Manasseh were brought up to know and honour and fear God, Yahweh alone. I mentioned in the service last Sunday in the words of Joshua, these are the words, some of the teaching that these two, Timothy and Manasseh, would have known as well. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And yet there was a difference from a relatively young age through uh, the prayers and the teaching and the example of Timothy's mother and grandmother. Timothy himself came with his own faith, with his own love for Jesus Christ. But even though Manasseh would have received uh, the, the prayers and the teaching and the example, he turned his back upon the Lord his God. And when he took the reigns and when he took to the throne of Judah at the age of just 12 he turned his back on the God his father loved. He turned his back upon Yahweh and he went his own way with his own pride, his own lust and his own sin. And I think there are perhaps many of you who have been watching these videos. Maybe you grew up in a Christian home or a Christian community Perhaps you used to go to Sunday school or church and you knew about God. You never had your own faith or relationship, but when you had the opportunity, you turned your back and you went your own way. Well, we're going to discover with Manasseh, even though he did some evil and he did some evil things, we're going to learn about the love of God, that even for Manasseh, we're going to see that the love of God is so deep. And my friend, it is deep enough to cover your sin, to cover over the wrong that you have done in your life. And so I hope and pray that wherever you are today, whatever is going through your mind, whatever is going through your heart, that you would seek Jesus Christ, that you would remember him, that you would think about all that he has done and you would remember the famous words of the Gospel writer John 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. It's not meant to be a sermon, but there you go. I'm standing here looking out over to the hills of Sutherland, and if I could show you further, I would. But this is a week of prayer for our Northern Presbytery. I've introduced you to many of the guys in our presbytery. There's been different prayer meetings throughout this week all over the north of Scotland. And I'm thankful to those of you who are praying elsewhere too. Uh, the chair of our strategy committee here at Presbytery, uh, Al McInnes, is going to speak to us in a moment and just share with us some more about what we are doing and why we're doing it. Why we're praying for these precious villages and towns and communities here in the north of Scotland. Thanks, Al. Friends, as we've been uh, praying for our communities over the last week, and maybe as you've looked at some of the statistics for uh, our presbytery, it maybe feels a wee bit like a cold, dark winter's morning where you look outside and because of the cold and the darkness, there's a temptation to just curl back up under the duvet and stay comfortable and warm. But the reality is that God has placed each one of us here in the north. And he has done that as part of his plan and part of his purpose. And he has blessed us not only with situating us in over 3,000 square miles of beautiful landscape, but also put us in a community of over 61,000 people who are made in his image and who he has a plan for and has good news for. So while our numbers are maybe low and we may be tempted to be discouraged or feel overwhelmed by the task ahead of us, I would like to encourage you with two passages of scripture that have come uh, uh, up in the last week in our studies here in Dornoch. The first is in Hebrews where it speaks about Jesus going ahead of us as our high priest, as our saviour, and how he opens a way for us into the presence of God and that in him we can come before the throne of grace and mercy um, confidently, boldly, not on our own credit but because of him and that because of that we are able to come and seek the mercy and the grace that we need to help us in the days ahead. And the second uh, passage is from 1 John where uh, we are reminded that the message that we preach isn't just a philosophy or an idea or some concept or even just some theological idea, but actually the message we have is about a person. It is about the person, Jesus, the Son of God, who has come uh, to bridge that gap between us and God, who has opened that way of salvation so that we can come into his presence, into God's presence with joy and happiness. And it says there that the message that we proclaim, the message that we speak is one of light. We are to be salt and light in the darkness around us. So friends, as we look to the days ahead, I want to encourage you to continue praying. And for each of my brothers and sisters, as we look at this task, please don't think of it as something that only faces the leadership in our presbytery, but actually as believers, each one of us has been called, each one of us has been given a gift, each one of us has been um, entrusted with this amazing message of good news in Jesus. And we are to look for opportunities to share that and to stir our brothers and sisters up in the works, uh, in love and good works. So I want to uh, encourage you and bless you to do that and I uh, pray that you would continue to lift us up also in that. And that together, uh, in the days ahead, as we look to our Savior Jesus, that he would equip us uh, to serve him well here. And that we would get to see his kingdom flourish and grow in our hometowns. So let's pray together. Father God, I thank you uh, for the opportunities that you have given us. For the fact that you have placed us, uh, each of us, where we are today. And that you have a purpose for us. Uh, and that your desire is that we would find our joy in you, and that as we find our joy in you, that we would share that good news with others. So I pray that you would help us to share that good news with the communities around us, that we would be salt and light for you here. 
And we ask this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. God bless you. Let me remind you that the clocks go back this Sunday morning. And let me also uh, remind you that on Sunday evening, there will be no evening service on our YouTube channel, but we are meeting for prayer on Zoom. So the details are on your screen at the moment for that. And Al and his congregation from Dornoch are going to join us here at Tain and Fern. Uh, you're all most welcome to come along. So it'll be great to see you. It'll be great to pray in response to COVID-19. And as we bring our week of prayer here in the north to an end. May the Lord be with you and may you have a blessed weekend.